Welcome guys, today we're talking about a deck that you've probably seen a lot on ladder recently during the last week or two. Uh, it's a Mechmage deck created, as far as I know, by Colento, who also claimed rank 1 legend with it uh, at some point of the last season. Um, I guess you're familiar with the concept, it's a pretty dedicated tempo deck, therefore you will not find any hard removal or AoE in this deck but more a lot of annoying and efficient minions. Kind of like um, Zoo, but the Zoo decks usually try to get off really good and efficient traits with cards like Abusive Sergeants that you won't find in this deck. But um, this deck is more dedicated towards the tempo of the minions themselves. Um, let's start with what makes Mech Mage better than other mech decks because people keep asking me that and I can tell or from my perspective there are a few reasons why Mech Mage um, at least at the moment is better than most other mech decks. First of all they have a pretty good and resilient and annoying 2-drop, the Snow Chugger, which uh, has 3 health health which is really important because it doesn't die to cards like smite it doesn't die to cards like consecration or holy nova later in the game and it do also doesn't die to a turn one zombie chow clockwork gnome leper gnome and all of these so all of the prevalent decks in the current meta have their one or two drop that can actually, like, the Snow Chugger can survive them. It also survives them at Scientist, for example, or a Mech Warper. So, uh, the three health matter a lot in comparison, for example, to the Shaman's two job. The Sabomatic is, of course, a lot uh, scarier in form of burst, but it dies to AoE, like Consecration or Holy Nova, or early to, uh, or it gets just countered by a turn one Zombie Chow. Also, the Snow Chugger itself is pretty annoying, even if it dies against a bigger minion, it freezes it, you can freeze warriors with it and such. Um, in comparison to cards, uh, to decks like Mech Druid that I've seen, most of the lists don't run their Robocup or the 2-drop, but o only the Mech Warper. But this, is, uh, this makes it hard to make cards like Cockmaster or Tinkertown Technician um, benefit from the Mech benefit. Um, on a consistent basis. Also, you uh, the RoboCup has Taunt, which makes it a little bit worse, um, actually, in comparison to the Snow Chugger, because uh, this, you can hide the Snow Chugger behind an Anoyatron. So you can coin out a Snow Chugger and um, then play an Anoyatron to keep it safe. Or if you're up against a Warrior and he the Fire Warrior X, of course, kills it, or a Power Mace by a Shaman or something, um, but then at least they get frozen. So this one is uh, really key of the deck, I'd say. Also, um, I talked about tempo earlier. The Mad Scientist is a is one of the best tempo cards in the game right now. But uh, together with Mac Warper, but Mac Warper works in every deck, right? But the Mad Scientist only works in certain decks, which are for them at the moment Hunter and Mage. Um, I try to make Mad Scientist work in Paladin as well, and it's nice because they... It's still nice because they draw a card of, out of your deck that you don't have to play, but um, the Paladin secrets don't have this much impact than the Mage does, and that's why they only cost one mana instead of three. So um, in this deck, the Mad Scientist um, only runs with Mirror Entity, which makes the Mad Scientist a 2 2 for 2 Death Rattle, summon the next minion or copy the next minion your opponent plays. Which is, even against, even in the mirror match, pretty good. Like, even if uh, the, uh, the mid-scientist just summons you a Clockwork Gnome from the opponent's mech mage, you get a 2-1 for nothing, basically, which is kind of comparable to um, Harvest Gnome, for example. And they also won't have to remove it like, if they play Corkalog Gnome and Ping, they waste 3 mana on the death rattle of the Mad Scientist. So overall, this is a lot of tempo gain early. And of course, there is the Goblin Blast Mage, which is 
also a huge MVP in this deck and can work consistently because you run cards like Snow Chugga, Neutron, and Spider Tank um, to play before them. Sometimes they don't work, but the four random damage on the board is uh, really huge, especially if you can play it at turn four or set up the board. Like against a Hunter, for example, you can kill a Leper Gnome, a Clockwork Gnome, and a leftover Spider from a Haunted Creeper right away. And you clear the board with just playing a 5 4 for 4 mana, which is also pretty huge. Other than that, I think the deck list is pretty standard. Um, overall, uh, there's one card choice that have been asked uh, frequently. Like, it's the Azure Drake. People ask, like, couldn't you play a uh, Pilot Sky Golem instead? Or what about Lothab? And I thought about this while playing the deck quite often. But I think the Azure Drake fits the deck the most because it doesn't have any other card draw. So the one card that you can get from this is um, pretty nice. Also, like I said, it's a dedicated tempo deck. So even if your opponent like swipes this to remove it, you still gain a card, and they spend their whole turn of remo uh, on remo or almost the whole turn on removing the Azure Drake. But you still have at least the card. Um, also, it's nice to have something to play on 5, which um, I found myself playing the Azure Drake on turn 5 actually quite often. So, uh, if it was a pilot Sky Golem, which is a lot, of, uh, which is a lot scarier, I agree on that, um, you can play it a turn later. And the one mana cost actually, I feel like, matter a lot. But of course, I think both Lothab and uh, pilot Sky Golem would be appropriate replacements for the Azure Drake. Um, then of course there's one more mech, uh, mech mage strength. It's the Archmage Antonidas. Um, you have uh, a lot of spare powered resources or sources I should say. Uh, it's the Clockwork Gnome, it's the Tinkertown Technician and the Mechanical Yeti and maybe also like uh, mirror entity card by your opponent or other yetis or such. So you can get like five spare parts during a game very easily, or at least a few of them, and can cycle them with the Archmage Antonidas, especially the Cloak Field, which gives your uh, which gives one of your minions stealth for one turn, is pretty huge if you can play Archmage Antonidas into the Cloak Field at turn eight. You get a f you get a stealth five seven plus a free fireball, plus you can cycle the fireball for all your mana that you have. So this is actually pretty nice against control decks, especially if they um, used all their removal because they fall be fell behind on tempo and then executed your, I don't know, spider tank and stuff like this. Um, if they had to deal with a lot of stuff and then you can come up with uh, a lot of fireballs or even just the 5-7 body. Um, you can pretty much outrace them. Um, another question that came up quite often is, uh, is Dr. Boom necessary in this deck? First of all, it's a BGH target and it's the only BGH target in the deck. So if your opponent runs BGH, then this will get destroyed, right? Second, uh, it's a seven mana card and if you draw it early, it sits there for a lot of turns. Um, I thought about this too a lot, but I think Dr. Boom earns its place in this deck. First of all, um, in the meta right now, there are a lot of tempo decks too. So you're playing, for example, in the mirror, ma uh, in the mirror match, um, this deck doesn't run BGH. Um, Hunters don't run BGH. Zoo doesn't run BGH. And even if you are up against a deck that runs BGH, um, they're not sure to have it in their hand. And that's the good thing about Dr. Boom which makes it better than, let's say, War Golem. Uh, it also leaves something behind. So if, you're po if you play Dr. Boom at turn 7 and your opponent plays a BGH, they still have just five, uh, 4 mana left, and you still have 2 Boom Bots, which also can uh, clear parts of the board, um, overcome taunts, or just deal more face damage by exploding and killing something on the board or killing the BGH, for example. So overall, I think the Dr. Boom also earns a place in this deck. <clears throat> uh, 
And although it seems like a pretty standard list, um, because you just throw everything <laughs> right there, which has either a mech tech, like tech, or um, mech synergy, it's going pretty well. Uh, it works pretty consistently. And like the only tech choices are the mad scientist, uh, the mirror entity, and maybe the end game cards. But um, there are a lot of other versions flowing, floating around. For example, some that run Mana Worm and Unstable Portal. Some which run Water Elementals, which are also pretty annoying minions. Um, some run Blinktron I've seen, and of course the Pilot Sky Golem. So there's a lot of variation that you can build with this list. But uh, that's uh, the list I played during the last season. So the gameplay footage that you will see right after that is um, my climb at Legend Ladder on the last day of season 10. I didn't have the time to climb to the top 100, unfortunately, but I did a pretty good climb with this deck uh, with a few fast games. So I hope that you can get a grasp of it and how the deck works in action and how annoying it can be in action. Um, thanks for watching guys and bye bye. Thanks Aristos for the follow. You asked for it. My magic will tear you apart. Uh, mage again. Now I'm at the point where like where I'm always matched up against lower ranked opponents. This is what makes the climb Especially harder because you lose so much more than you gain if you lose. Kept two cards, probably Magmage 2. Um, wonder if I should keep a Noyage one going first. I probably should. Protect my guys. Um, he might be on an advantage because I don't have a one drop, and he might just coin out a 2 and play another 2. Even like Mac Whopper, Clockwork Gnome. Ah, chuga chuga. Uh, there's my one drop. One turn late. Um, playing with the Mad Scientist will just give me something small. But that's okay. If I play a Night when he pings hits, then that's a 2 2. I guess playing these two next turn into Yeti, given that I'll have something of his, oh it makes the Noitron even better now. Or does it? Yeah, well, a little bit at least. Probably has to ping, and then his sugar dies. On any of these minions, and he can sacrifice his mad scientist, which gives me one more turn. That's good. Well, cogmaster is not what I was looking for. But... Yeah, it's definitely Yeti. Then I killed this for free. And then I have the Neutron that I can give him. Yeah, it seems good. Could kill this for free. Should take it. If you can kill the Yeti, it's a 1-2 one, one, uh, one, anyway. So. Hello! You will have three Annoyatrons the next turn. Ah, uh, Blast Mage would have been nice. So much hello. So much greetings. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 <laughs> 
Hello. Uh. Sanskrit? What? German or English? Well, I'm German and the whole thing is English. So that can, that everyone can talk to everyone. <laughs> uh, that's so many one attack and divine shield guys. Uh, one, two, three, four damage. Can like ping, hit, hit. Okay. What to do? What to do? Fireball on this one. To attack. Like, is this a whirling blade? Almost. Bam! <laughs> oh, I think this was a misplay actually. He could have reversed switched my guy to a 2 1 and then killed her with Divine Shield, and then he wouldn't have had to sacrifice his own guy. Mistakes, mistakes. Uh, I'm floating a lot of mana this turn. Cooling this doesn't help anything, stealthing it. No. At least I have the Dr. Boom upcoming next turn, so I have to hope that he doesn't have a mirror entity now. Something needs tinkering? I have a mirror entity. <laughs> I have to play the boom, basically. And then I hit, hit. Next turn, probably mirror energy, whatever I draw. Uh. Maybe fireball. Oh, and tinnitus. Do I have lethal? Um. Antonidas, Cloakfield, 9, 21, 12, plus 5. He shouldn't be able to kill me fast enough, so this should be lethal. Like, early enough, I hope. I hope that he's forced to clear. I mean, he has 10 damage. If he somehow has two fireballs in his hand. Well, I can clear his board with fireballs next turn anyways. He has to clear my board. Oh, okay. okay. So he doesn't even try. It's 12 plus 12. It's easy lethal. Oh, I burn! I burn! Oh, pre pretty close ranks. Oh, this has potential for a disgusting start. I'll take it. I kept two cards. Um, yeah. So I will play Mech Whopper. He will play War X, then I play Mech Whopper Clockwork Gnome, then he hits this, and I have the Tinker Town for the Clockwork Gnome. Um. Oh! Uh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> Forgot to play it with it. Whoops. Oh, wow. I didn't. Uh, oh. Now I need... Huh. Shredder would be good. Ow. Nice. Yeah, something like I can play next turn. Mm, okay, fine. Fine, I guess. Um... Something needs tinkering? Do 
Didn't want to lose the Neutron. One more body is good. Back to uh. work. Tempo play! Hit it! Yep. Wow. Um, if I had a sugar early on, like instead of the Neutron for example, would have been an amazing start. Like, even more amazing, of course. Uh, I have the clock field for the Internitus. I have just to make some pressure. Should be fine. Um, five, two, well, this dies too. And it doesn't really matter. I don't have any mechs, anyways. Ex most of expensive mech is four. So. More spare parts. He didn't brawl last turn, so I'll just assume that he doesn't have it. Uh, running this into that might have been better. Uh, well, now it happened. Oh, his next turn is something like, I don't know, Shield Maiden? Wait, how much damage is this anyways? Uh, let's see. Ah, second Taskmaster. It's sugar, it's sugar, finally it's sugar. Um, wait, so 3, 8, 10, 14, 15. Ah, oh, not quite. I think I can sack this off. I could even sack this off against the whirlwind. Yeah, this has the lowest HP I can. No, this has more health, uh, more attack. Uh, well, let's find this one. <laughs> if I could use them, that's this on characters. <laughs> wow. This snowballed quite fast. 